Okay, so how well do you actually understand how to solve algebra equations? Well, if you have pretty strong algebra equation solving skills, you should be able to solve this equation right here with the aid of a calculator pretty easily. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. So we have three to the x divided by two power, and this is equal to 12 and we're looking to solve for the variable x. All right, so this is a multiple choice question, and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our choices here. So A is eight, B is 24, C is 2.26, and D is 4.52. Once again, feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go and take a look at the problem one more time. We have three to the x divided by two power is equal to 12. Now I did indicate that uh, you wanna use a calculator to solve this equation, but you don't actually need a calculator to pick the right answer. You'll see what I'm talking about in just one second, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that right answer. The correct answer here is D 4.52. All right, now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and a plus a 100% and a certificate of excellence for being a certified professional expert in solving basic exponential equations. All right, so that's what we're talking about here. You can see the variable X is in the exponent position. You see, when we have a power like two to the third power, the little number in the uh, top right, this thing right here, this is what we call the exponent. This big thing down here, this big number is called the base. The entire thing is called a power. So you can see here we have three to some power, x divided by two. So the variable that we're looking to solve for is in the exponent location. So this is what we call an exponential equation. And uh, typically you learn about uh, these type of equations in courses like Algebra 2, College Algebra, Pre-Calculus. So if you never took that math uh, before, no big deal, because some of you probably use common sense and logic to pick the right answer, and that is fantastic. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. Certainly don't feel bad if you didn't get this right. By the time you finish this video, you too will be a certified professional expert. All right, now one thing here, that uh, I did indicate you could use a calculator. So no one should have gotten this problem wrong. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, what are you talking about? I was totally lost. You should, you, are you telling me that I should have got this thing right? Yes, indeed, I am. Now, if you understand just basic algebra equation concepts, for example, uh, let's suppose I had three x is equal to uh, 12. Let's say this is our equation. And our choices uh, would be, let's say, A, X is 1, uh, B, X is 2, and C, uh, X is 4, okay? All right, so what you can do here is replace the variable X with these values. So in other words, X is a number, so 3 times, if I want to check this solution, X is equal to 1, I'm going to plug in a 1 for X, so 3 times 1 is what? Well, that's 3. That is not equal to 12, so this can't be the answer. So you just kind of go through this process of elimination. Here, obviously, let's see X is equal to 4. If I plug in a 4 for X, I'm going to get 3 times 4. Is that equal to 12? Indeed it is, because 12 is equal to 12. So the number that makes the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side, or makes the equation balance, is what we call the solution. So anytime you are dealing with an algebra equation, okay, of course, if you have something like this, matter of fact, let me go ahead and just highlight this right here. So we have an equation right there, okay, this is how we know we have an equation, and we have a multiple choice question, and this is really important, 
for those of you that still have to take math exams in your life. When you have a multiple choice question, you can always use the process of elimination by plugging in and checking here. Let me go to erase this little character right there. So uh, never forget this uh, tactic. This is extremely important. So again, even if you're like, I don't even know what to do here. Well, you could certainly just check these values and see what makes sense. So let's uh, check eight here, for example. So I, if I replace this X, with an eight, I'm gonna get what? Well, that's gonna be three to the eight divided by two. So what is uh, eight divided by two? Well, eight divided by two is four, so that's three to the fourth power, which is three times three times three times three, which is 81, or nine times nine, right? So um, three to the fourth power is 81, so all of this, when uh, X is eight, turns out to be an 81. You can see 81 is not equal to 12. All right, this is a much larger value. So if eight, okay, if we replace this X with an eight, and this is a large value over here, 81, well then 24 is not gonna work as well. So we can just el eliminate those two choices and check these two right here with our calculator, right? So this is one approach that you could have taken just to get the right answer. So if you did that, fantastic. That's exactly what you should have done. And uh, let's go ahead and, and really kind of talk about what happens if uh, this kind of goes away from a multiple choice question and now you just have this question with no choices? Well, then here we're actually going to have to know the math. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and explain this in such a way that even if you've never solved exponential equations before, you'll be able to understand. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right, so first things first, uh, again, we have this variable x. It's in the exponent location. So this is not like a, this type of equation, 3x is equal to 12, right? This is a linear equation, and uh, the variable is not in the, ex, uh, in the exponent spot, okay? When the variable's in the exponent spot, well, we're going to have to do some special things here, but we can still use some other kind of, kind of common sense methods to at least estimate, get a rough estimation for the answer. So let's take the actual problem right here, three to the x over two is equal to 12. And instead of this fraction exponent, let's make this really simple. Let's just turn this into x for the time being, right? Let's take a look at this problem. Three to the x power is equal to 12, right? So what is x equal to? Well, we can get some really kind of a, a basic idea of where the answer, the range of where the answer is going to be at, right? So what, what this uh, is saying, is three to the sum power is equal to 12. So let's just kind of test some numbers here. So let's let X, uh, we'll try one and we'll try two, we'll try three and we'll see what happens here. So three to the first power is three. Well, we're looking for three to some power and that's equal to 12. So this is too small, right? So let's go ahead and kick that up by one. So now we have three to the second power. Well, three times three is nine. Well, that's you know, pretty close, it's better than three, but we want 12, right? So three to the second power is nine, not 12, but it's certainly much closer than three to the first. All right, so how about three to the third? Well, this is three times three times three, that's 27. So this is way too big, right? Because we want 12. So our answer, okay, is probably pretty close to two. So a little bit over two. So it's gonna be some sort of decimal. So, um, three to the second power is nine, obviously. So let's just use uh, two, okay? Uh, that's not, obviously, three to the second power is not 12, it's nine, but it's kind of close. So let, let's just kind of use two here for uh, the time being because I wanna make this point. So if we just imagine our power here, uh, x over two uh, being equal to two, okay? That's gonna be three squared or nine. It's not 12, but it's kind of close because we're looking to solve for the variable x. So let's suppose we're like, all right, well, maybe x over two, we're gonna let that equal to two, okay? Because this is the two that I'm talking about right there. So I wanna solve for x, right? So how do I solve this basic algebra equation right here? Well, this is what we call a proportion. You can simply cross multiply. So x times one is x and two times two is four. So x is equal to four. All right, so if, if x is equal to four right over here in this equation, let me erase this. If we have the solution x is equal to four, I would plug it in for this x, four, so I get four divided by two, that's two, and then I'm gonna get three squared. That, of course, is nine, not 12, 
but you know our answer is going to be uh, like a, a little bit over four. Okay, so that's another approach that we could take uh, in terms of a multiple choice situation. You can see here, this is our answer and it's a little bit over four. But this way, uh, you know, the, you kind of guesstimate what the value of the answer is going to be, but we need a more kind of direct approach and that's what we're gonna get into right now. All right, so uh, again, we have a sense of what the answer is gonna be, but we have to recognize that this variable is up in the exponent spot. So this is, by definition, an exponential equation. And when you have an exponential equation, you have to use something called logarithms to solve exponential equations. There are exceptions, exceptions but uh, in general, uh, you have to use logarithms. Now, lo a logarithm, if you have your calculator handy and you have a scientific function, or if you have a scientific calculator, you'll see these buttons on your calculator, LOG, and this one right here, uh, LN, okay? These two things right here are the log uh, logarithmic functions, right? They're extremely important in math. And if you ever wonder what these buttons do, well, I'm gonna explain that to you right now. Okay, so this thing here is what we call the common logarithm, and this is the natural logarithm. This is a huge topic. If you actually need to learn this stuff, check out my Algebra 2 and or pre-calculus courses. I'm gonna leave links to those in the description of this video, but uh, we're gonna use this one right here. I cannot possibly teach you everything about logarithms. Again, this is like a full you know, chapter, exponential functions and logarithmic functions, but you know, at least you'll have a basic sense of what to do in order to solve an equation like this. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. And what we're going to do, first things first, is we're going to take the logarithm of both sides of the equation. Now, you won't really understand, you know, these steps. You know, like you might be saying, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you know, I don't really understand these, you know, what you're doing. I'll just kind of listen to you, uh, but I'll totally forget this. I, I understand, right? I understand what you're saying. This is not a full course instruction here, but I'm just telling you the basic uh, process. So when we have an exponential equation and we have a power, okay, in other words, just a, a base and, and an exponent on one side and a number on the other side, what we do is take the log of both sides. You'll see here in a second, I think this will un kind of make more sense as we get going. Now, when we have the log of a number, just like this right here, LOG of 12, when we take the log of a number, this is nothing more than a decimal, right? This is some sort of value that you can get in your calculator. So if you want to get your calculator out and go LOG 12, you'll see some number appear. Okay, so you could actually literally just replace LOG 12 with this decimal value. So it's gonna make your life a lot easier. So don't be afraid of the logarithmic uh, notation here, all right? So LOG 12, just in your brain, think of that, oh, that's a number, okay? All right, but uh, over here, we um, have to do something extra special to get at this exponent. So let's gonna take that step right now. And what I'm talking about is using something called a property of logarithms. So there's a property of logarithms when you take the logarithm of a, a power, you can drop the exponent down in front of the logarithm. Now this is a particular, what we call property of logarithms, there's about four or five of them that you, you'll need to know. But as long as you remember this one, you'll be good to go, at least for this particular problem. Okay, so when we take the log of a power, like the log of x squared, I could rewrite that, I could drop the exponent in front of the log. So that's equal to two log x. Okay, so hopefully you understand that. So here, I could take this entire exponent and write it in front of the logarithm. Now that is awesome because remember, log 12, this is just a decimal, and log three is just a decimal, it's just a number, okay? So you can get these values in your calculator. Now you have a basic algebra equation, x over two times this number is equal to this number. So we're talking about you know pretty basic algebra. So again, don't be afraid of the log notation. So keep that in mind, and what I'm going to do here is rewrite this expression. We have x over two times log three. All right, you can think of this as a fraction over one. So I'm gonna write this as x log three over two. You'll see why here in a second. 
and here we go. All right, so x log 3 over 2 is equal to log 12. All right, so uh, some of you said, oh, no, I saw the little subscribe button. Uh, he's going to ask me to subscribe. He always stops his videos, and uh, and indeed, I am going to uh, stop this video and ask you to subscribe, okay, because I definitely need your help because I have a goal, right? Hopefully, uh, these two words are in your vocabulary. Hopefully, you have a goal. Now, if your goal is to learn math, you should try to be specific. Maybe you want to improve in algebra. Maybe you want to learn geometry. Whatever the case is, have a specific goal. Put a timeline on it as well if you can. Uh, but if you're just kind of learning math as a hobby or interest, you know, I would just focus on learning, you know, one skill at a time. So there's no rush there. But, uh, you know, establish some sort of vision for yourself, some sort of goal. But if you're struggling to, you know, reach your goal, you know, when it comes to math, you got to get help. Now, who should you ask for help? Well, if you are a student, always go to your teacher first. Now, if you need more help beyond your teacher and you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I wouldn't be here at this video if I understood my teacher. Well, I get that. Uh, but listen, still communicate with your teacher. But if you want my best instruction, it goes far beyond what I do on YouTube. Check out my full main math courses. Again, what we're talking about here, logarithms and, and such, uh, exponential equations. Uh, you really want to check out like my Algebra 2 course and or pre-calculus course uh, for those of you that are at this level of mathematics. But uh, anyways, I have a ton of additional content on my YouTube channel. You can find that or you can see my latest videos by hitting that notification button. But before you do that, you have to hit the subscribe button. So thank you so much for uh, giving me a little bit of time to blab about what I do. And now let's move on to this problem. Okay, so let's review where we're at. All right, so this is x times log 3 over 2. Now, what we have here is effectively a fraction, okay? Now, this is a decimal over 2, okay? So log 3, again, I can turn this into a decimal. But, you know, in your mind's eye, if I had this equation, x uh, times 3, 3 over 2 is equal to some other number. Let's just make a number up like 10. How do you solve this basic algebraic equation? Right now, you wouldn't have the uh, coefficient uh, in behind the variable. In other words, we would write it this way. Uh, 3 over 2x is equal to 10. So to solve this equation, you would want to multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of that fraction. In other words, we would flip it upside down, 2 over 3 times 2 over 3, because this would give us a 1 on this side of the equation. So we're talking about basic algebra uh, here. So if you are lost, then yeah, you might want to check out my uh, Algebra 1 course or Math Skills Rebuilder course. So pay attention uh, or focus on what I just told you, because this part can be a little bit confusing. All right, so I want to solve for x. All right, now here, I have this expression, log 3 over 2. So how can I get a 1 over here, 1x? Well, I need to get all this cross cancel. So we're just going to flip it upside down, all right? We're going to multiply the left-hand side by the reciprocal. So we're going to move the 2 up here and the log 3 down here. Because when I do that, the 2s cross cancel and the log 3s cross cancel, at least with just x. That's what I want. But remember, the golden rule of algebra is whatever you multiply or do to one side of the equation, you have to do the same thing to the other side. So I have to multiply the other side by 2 over log 3. Okay, so that's the main idea here. And if I misspoke, you can kind of see the writing, uh, what's going on. All right, so that's what I'm doing over here. And we're going to end up with x on the left-hand side of the equation. So I have log 12 times 2 over log 3. So this 2 doesn't get multiplied by this 12, all right? This is 2 times log 12 in front of that, just like this. And, uh, you know, this is something you'll better understand when you uh, study this in more detail. But what we have is 2 times, 2 times log 12 divided by log 3. All right, so now we need to go into our calculator, and you want to use parentheses. So you can put, like, parentheses 2 times log uh, 12 in parentheses, parentheses, divided by parentheses, log 3. It's important to use parentheses. But when you do all of that, and if you did this correctly, you're going to get a decimal. That's approximately 4.5237. Uh, 4 and we'll just kind of round it off to 4.52, something in that ballpark. So uh, this, obviously, is the correct answer. But, you know, going back to, you know, asking ourselves, hey, does that uh, solution make sense? We can go back to this little, you know, uh, experiment that we were doing, just testing values, right? We're like, all right, well, 3 squared, that's kind of close to 12. And then when I did that, oh, x is equal to 4, so that's kind of generally in the ballpark. So 
it's a reasonable answer, right? Especially here when we have a multiple choice uh, question, it would be the obvious choice. All right, so again, there is no substitute uh, for just you know not knowing the math. Uh, you know, when you do have multiple choice questions, again, that's a huge advantage, but you have to be very careful because a lot of the answers are designed to confuse you. Like right here, if you chose C, C, if we take this answer and divide it by two, this is what you're going to get. So, you know, this can kind of throw some people off as well. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.